think that we should go to couples counseling. Okay, what I hear you saying is that you think I'm heading off the rails again. You know, it's not exactly in my job description to hide in bathrooms. But I guess neither is our colleagues with benefits arrangement. I appreciate your discretion. Thank you. I thought you fixed things. It sounds like you made them a whole lot worse. No, that wasn't my intention. This is classic Phyllis going on a tirade, hoping everyone will give you a pass when you finally acknowledge the damage you've done. I told you to stay away from him. But you couldn't. I, I said this before, I'll say it again. I'm done with you. Another show I once again have to drive into the ground that it's bad because of the writing. I made a video last week that Marina was out as executive producer, but Josh Griffith not only gets to keep his writing job, but he is now the sole executive producer until they seem to make more changes. They should have just cleaned house. Both of them should have been gone, and we have new energy into the show because it's desperately needed. I also talked in last week's video, the worst thing with Griffith's writing last week was Billy and Chelsea having that conversation where Billy's like, he, it was great when Chelsea raped him. And he loved that night all of a sudden. Like, that's just terrible writing there. And no wonder there was actually a lot of pissed off people online about that. Maybe that's what was finally the straw that broke the camel's back with the executive producer. But I don't understand how that was not the straw that broke the camel's back with Josh Griffith, alas, it wasn't. I don't think any of these stories going on right now are good on the show. It's the same old crap I've had to talk about for over a year now since I've been doing these rankings with Young and the Restless. Josh Griffith's writing has not changed at all. He's had a couple of good stories in the spring and summer, but those petered out quickly because he doesn't know how to write climaxes apparently. Like one point in time, I would have considered Josh Griffith a pretty decent soap opera writer. And that's only because of his stint on One Life to Live, even though he was only co-head writer. And clearly, Josh Griffith was not the brains behind that operation. I've said this before, but clearly Michael Malone was the brains behind that operation as a head writer on One Life to Live in the early 90s when One Life to Live was pretty dang good. They then returned as head writer of One Light to Live in the mid-2000s or early 2000s. And that stint wasn't as good. But I don't think that stint was terrible, as terrible as others think it might have been. But ever since Josh Griffith came on to The Young and the Restless in the late 2000s, and then he's been back and forth a lot, and then he went over to Days for a while and sucked it up on Days 2, Josh Griffith has to be considered a bottom 10 soap opera writer. In my opinion. I think Josh Griffith is now considered one of the worst soap opera writers in the history of American soap operas to me. Because, I mean, he doesn't... This is the thing with Josh Griffith. Because, maybe I shouldn't say that, because he doesn't actually tear apart the shows. Like, some writers are so bad that they like, completely ruin the show. But, like, Josh Griffith doesn't even try to even write storylines. He doesn't try to make characters that interesting. And it's just... To me, one of the worst things a TV show can do is be boring. And Josh Griffith is that to a T. Boring as a writer. He writes nothing but boring stuff. Like, an example is just that Christmas episode. That was the last episode I watched Young and the Restless before recording this. And it was boring with terrible dialogue like that was just a giant waste of time instead of giving us some drama on christmas or just something even like give us families on christmas that's what we like out of soap operas but that that was bad that was a bad boring episode the chance and abby breakup could it be more boring could them trying to shove chance with sharon be more awkward and boring Sharon needs more to do. That's been the biggest waste of talent on Young and the Restless since Josh Griffith took it over, is Sharon as a character. But instead, we're getting an Adam and Sally Nick triangle, which is going to go the way of, like, a typical soap opera. 
Josh Griffith cannot think outside the box. Apparently, no. He has to give us something we've seen on soap operas a hundred times now. Just a hundred times over the last two decades alone. He's going to give us a who's the daddy storyline with Adam, Sally, and Nick. Raise your hand if that's what you want to see out of Adam, Nick, and Sally. Who's the daddy out of Adam, Nick, and Sally? Like either Adam or Nick need more young children or need Nick doesn't need any more children. All his children are grown. I get it, but he doesn't need another young child. And I don't think Sally needs to be saddled with a kid either. That's just going to make her less interesting than the show somehow manages to do. Sally could be a super interesting character, and at times she can be, but because of Josh Griffith's boring writing, she's not all that interesting to me anymore. And I don't think this is... The, the triangle already is makes me roll my eyes at times. Like, it's not the worst, but now it's going to be. Now it's going to be the worst, because they're going to bog this story down with a who's the daddy storyline. Like... Give me something, Young and the Restless. Give me something. Like, you're about to get to your 50th anniversary, and you have dim-witted, boring Josh Griffith writing the show. Could CBS care any less about the show? The Nikki and Phyllis and Ashley stuff, have they been trying to take down Diane? And Phyllis tells Jeremy Stark that Diane is in Genoa City, which brings Jeremy Stark to town, and he's supposed to be a, the newest big bad villain the younger the restless even though we all know the way josh griffith writes these villains they go nowhere and then they either die or leave so the jeremy stark story will not have a real climax they could be getting more drama out of it but they're not because josh griffith's writing and so it's going to be the same thing we've seen probably with ashlyn and diane it's either going to go in circles or he's going to get killed off we have Jack trying to pay off Jeremy, Jack upset with Ashley, and Phyllis for bringing Jeremy Stark to town because it could threaten Diane, and he is threatening Diane. Now Jack is trying to bribe him, and I don't know where that's going to go. We'll see where that goes after Christmas, but I'm recording this the day after Christmas, so I don't know exactly where that's going. Can't say I care either. The only saving, the only thing saving the show honestly right now from being any lower on my rankings is trevor st john i think he is doing a great job as tucker he we we saw this when josh newman came on i like the energy he brought to the show i think trevor st john is trying to bring his energy to the show i like that he's playing ashley so that jack will have that with ashley when that comes about because ashley's been trusting tucker and tucker's just been having sex with audra and Audra doesn't really know what Tucker has planned for her either, what, how she really fits into Tucker's plans, but she keeps slip, sleeping with him anyway. I guess because Audra's not making any real progress with Noah. We also saw Audra and Nate kind of connect over a possible job too. I think Audra's another character bringing some interesting energy to the show, but will that last very long? Probably not because... Imani was wasted on the show. Imani brought some good energy to the show, but that went a whole lot of nowhere too because Josh Griffith sucks and his writing sucks. And every time I talk about Young and the Restless, I just want to talk about how much Josh Griffith sucks at writing because he does. And I'm not going to stop doing that until maybe one day, maybe one day, CBS will get it through their heads that Josh Griffith needs to be fired as head writer. Hell, keep him as an executive producer, I don't care. But get him away from the writing. Please get him away from the writing. As executive producer, can Josh Griffith think, hey, maybe the show needs a new writer because I suck. I would love that from him. Doubt we're going to get that from him. But I would love that. What it comes down to with Young and the Restless and why it's still so low in my rankings is that it's honestly a chore to watch this show. It's such a chore. It's the same as Emmerdale to me. Both of those shows, since I started these rankings, have been a chore to watch. They can be so boring. And then you add in the bad writing, and it's just so hard to watch. Like, the one thing Bold and the Beautiful has going for it, which is also low in my rankings lately, is that it's so short. Like, it's a quick 18 minutes. And if sometimes I fast forward <laughs> half of those 18 minutes, and it's just nine minutes to watch. 
because you know on Bold and Beautiful they repeat themselves so much, it's easy to fast forward. But Young and the Restless and Emmerdale, a chore to get through. I'm tired of watching both of them, honestly. And that's why they both remain pretty low on my rankings, because they are so hard to watch. And why is Young and the Restless so hard to watch? Because Josh Griffith sucks at writing. <laughs>